Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And from today's video, I'm going to start a new series, uh, which is on Bodo 3, right? Uh, so we did a series earlier with AWS CLI, and I thought let, let's just do a series on Bodo 3 as well. So if you don't know what Bodo 3 is, so Bodo 3 is basically Python SDK, uh, which actually lets you interact with uh, your resources in AWS Cloud, right? So that's what Bodo 3 is. And we'll, this series is for beginners and people who all, I mean, already know Bodo 3. It's for both of you guys. I mean, there's no prereq. So I'll start off with something very basic and then we'll do something what we did with AWS CLI, right? We'll first look at a few samples of, I mean, how to use Bodo 3. And then we'll cover a few major services like S3, EC2, right? <coughs> So let's get started. Uh, so let me first install Boto3. So Boto3 is installable using pip. So if you do pip install Boto3, and you can see I already have it installed. So that's why, but that's how you install it, pip, right? And to use it, it's very simple. So on the left-hand side, I have my Python console and this is my terminal. So I'll just do an import on Boto3. Right, so now I can use the Bodo3 functions. So to start using Bodo3, you first need to create a client. So if you simply do dir Bodo3, you can see what all methods are available to you. And this is the method which we are looking for, client, right? Uh, we also have a resource uh, method, which you can actually use to interact with the uh, resources. But uh, I'll talk about difference between client and uh, resource later because, yeah, I'll talk about it later. Let's let's just focus on client. So to create a client, uh, I'll just do say c is equal to boto3 dot client. If I get the spelling right. And then I need to specify a service. So whatever service I want to connect to, right? So in this case, I want to create an S3 client. So I'll do this. Now you must be wondering how Boto3 is actually authenticating with my AWS accounts. So that happens very similar to AWS uh, CLI. So we do, I mean, Boto CLI by default uses the credentials which are there in your ATC AWS uh, uh, da, 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 da. .aws, I think it's the credentials file, right? So this is the file which uh, AWS, Boto3 uses. And this file you actually create when you do an AWS configure, when you are setting up your AWS CLI, or you can manually create this file and put your keys inside this file, right? So if you don't have AWS CLI, you can just create this file, credentials file, and put your keys uh, inside that. All right, so that's how the Boto3 will actually use. So uh, I have everything configured inside this, my region and everything. So the Boto3 client will actually know that it needs to connect to which account and which region, right? All right, so now, so we have created a client. You can see it's created. So what can we do here? So when you create a client, it's a very low level API, right? So client is very low level. So one difference between resource and client, let me just tell you that resource is a, a, a lot high level uh, API, whereas a client is a very low level API in Boto3. And it's very similar to what all stuff is available to you in AWS CLI, right? The CLI API, what it provides, uh, same thing is provided by the Boto3 client API. So if I do AWS S3, and I just, you can see, or not S3, I would do S3 API because we, we are dealing with S3 API. And now if I do, you can see all these uh, actions are available to you, right? Similarly, if I do dir on C, you can see the same actions are available to you in the client, right? S3 client. It's just that you here you have hyphenated uh, uh, APIs and here you have uh, APIs with underscore. 
So if I do say, if I want to list the buckets, right? Let me clear the screen. So I can simply do C dot list underscore buckets. So I'm referring to the same API, which AWS CLI provides me uh, using Boto3. And if I just do this, it's going to list all the buckets you can see. So, I mean, it's a JSON format output. If you just want to filter it, I can do it with buckets, right? So now you'll get only the buckets and now you can actually refer to each bucket with an index, right? So this is the first bucket, this is the second bucket and so on, right? So that's, that's what client provides you, very low level API and it provides you similar actions what AWS CLI uh, provides you, right? So talking about resources and clients, so I've already told you uh, that the major difference between client and resource is that resource is a very high level abstraction of AWS, right? Whereas client is very low level. So you get almost all the action for all the services that are provided by AWS CLI. And also one more difference between resource and uh, basically client is that Resource does not cover all your services, whereas your client covers all your services. So there are a few services which are covered by resources, whereas uh, almost all the services are covered by client. So if you are working with a service which is not covered by resource, uh, you have no other option but to use client, right? But let's do, I mean, it covers uh, almost major services like EC2 S3. So if you're only working with major services, uh, even the Boto3 recommended pattern is to use resource uh, whenever possible, right? Instead of using uh, client because resource actually makes your code much cleaner. So let's see, uh, let's create a resource then. Resource, so I'll create a resource, Boto3. I don't myself use resource a lot. So let's do, Let's see what all resource our resource actions are available to you. So I'll create a resource for S3 instead of creating a client. And then I'll do a DIR on R to see what methods are available. And so we have bucket. So if I do R dot bucket and let me do a DIR on this because I don't think so it's so we have few methods here okay so I think this needs some kind of initialization so this is not I was I mean this is not I'm what I'm looking for uh, I actually want to list the buckets using the resource and I think I'm forgetting uh, how it is done just me let me think I think it is so R is my so let me try this bucket okay uh, I think it is like this okay so it's returning me a collection or a generator or iterator object whatever it is so if I do something like this yeah so you can see I mean the response is much cleaner uh, what we were getting from client right you can see I can get the list of all the buckets and it's actually more useful if you want to perform actions on the object of bucket, right? So if I do something like r dot bucket bucket, right? R dot bucket. Yeah, and I think I need to initialize this with some bucket. Let me just copy the name. Uh, no, 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 no. Go up. I think we listed some buckets over here. Uh, looking for a bucket which actually has something. I'm not sure if any any bucket has anything. All right, so let me just clear the screen. 
r dot bucket so see that's what happened when you don't work with resources much right you have to think and you have to i mean i'll probably refer to documentation rather than just second guessing myself so and i'll just initialize some or rather say obj1 right so now if i do dir obj1 so i have few methods available to me right so let me see how to list objects is there any download file is there objects so let's see what happens when i do obj dot obj1 dot objects object is not callable okay so i'm not using it correctly okay i think this is something similar to listing the buckets yeah i think this will give me an object and i can just do a list operation this would be okay access denied access denied so i don't have list permissions that's that's strange uh, so i mean you just got the gist right what what i'm trying to do i mean using resource is good if you're working with some well-known services ec2 s3 im i think resources are available for that but i prefer i mean that was my daughter sorry so yeah i prefer using client right so i'm much comfortable using client and it's easy to just go back to aws cli and see if the api is available to you or not because whatever apis are available to you here same things are provided by the client so it's much easier to uh, just refer right and we'll be using client throughout the course so we'll not be using resources so if you want to learn resources i would ref i mean I, I can point you to the documentation or you can just do a simple google search on boto3 resource and you would get a bunch of documentation you can read from cool so yeah i think we did the installation we saw a few examples and in the next video we'll take a look at how we are going to use uh, boto3 with ec2 instances uh, with s3 buckets and i am roles so the same things which we did for aws cli will do for boto3 as well all right so this is it for this video guys i hope you like the video uh, please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching